Chapter 5, Learning Objective 1. Describe merchandising and explain the financial statement components of sales, cost of goods sold, merchandise inventory, and gross profit, and differentiate between the perpetual and periodic inventory systems. A merchandising company or a merchandiser differs from a company that provides services. A merchandiser purchases and then sells goods, whereas a service company simply sells services. So for example, a car dealership is a merchandiser that sells cars, while an airline is a service company that sells air travel. Because merchandising involves the purchase and then resale of goods, an expense called cost of goods sold results. Now cost of goods sold is the cost of the actual goods sold. So for example, the cost of goods sold for a car dealer would be the cost of the cars purchased from the manufacturers, which are then resold to the customers. A service company does not have an expense called cost of goods sold since it doesn't sell any goods. Because a merchandiser has cost of goods sold expense and a service business doesn't, the income statement for a merchandiser includes different details. A merchandising income statement highlights cost of goods sold by showing the difference between the sales revenue and cost of goods sold called gross profit or gross margin. Then we would subtract expenses to arrive at net income. At this point, you may also be wondering, well, what's the difference between revenues and sales because the two terms are often used interchangeably. Sales is usually reserved for the sales of tangible goods. Revenue is a broad term to include all forms of revenue to a business, such as service revenue, interest revenue, rent revenue, as well as sales. Let's look at the basics of a merchandising company now. Let's assume that XL Cars Corporation decides to go into the business of buying used cars from a supplier and reselling them to customers. If Excel purchases a vehicle for $3,000 and then sells it for $4,000, the gross profit would be $1,000. $4,000 in sales less the $3,000 cost of goods sold. Now the word gross used by accountants doesn't mean yucky or nasty, but rather indicates that other expenses incurred in running the business must still be deducted from this amount before net income is calculated. Gross profit then represents the amount of sales revenue that remains to pay expenses after the cost of goods sold is deducted. A gross profit percentage can also be calculated to express the relationship of gross profit to sales. The sale of the vehicle that costs $3,000 results in a 25% gross profit percentage, $1,000 in gross profit divided by $4,000 in sales. For every $1 of sales, the company has 25 cents left to cover other operating expenses after deducting the cost of goods sold. Readers of financial statements use this percentage as a means to evaluate the performance of one company against other companies in the same industry or the same company from year to year. Small fluctuations in the gross profit can have significant impacts on the financial performance of a company. The amount of sales and cost of goods sold are often very large in comparison to other income statement items. Another difference between the service company and the merchandiser relates to the balance sheet. A merchandiser purchases goods for resale. Goods held for resale by a merchandiser are called merchandise inventory and are reported as an asset on the balance sheet. A service company would not normally have merchandise inventory. So since we're talking about inventory now, there are two types of ways in which inventory is managed. The first is through a perpetual inventory system and the second is a periodic inventory system. Under a perpetual inventory system, the merchandise inventory account and cost of goods sold account are updated immediately when transactions occur. As merchandise inventory is purchased, it's debited to the merchandise inventory account, and as inventory is sold to customers, the cost of the inventory is removed from the merchandise account and debited to the cost of goods sold account. A perpetual system means that the account balances are known on a real-time basis, and this chapter focuses primarily on the perpetual system. Indulge me for a moment and close your eyes and imagine you're walking through the front entrance of a Walmart. And after you're greeted, what's the sound you hear? I'll give you a hint, it's constant and short. If you guessed the beeping of the cash registers, you'd be right. That beeping sound happens after a product is scanned and is immediately removed from inventory, while at the same time, a truck could be backing up to the freight entrance and unloading product that's received into inventory with a hand scanner. Those beeps represent perpetual inventory in action. Under a periodic inventory system, the purchase of merchandise inventory is debited to a temporary account called purchases. 
and at the end of the accounting period, inventory is counted, and this is known as a physical count, and the merchandise inventory count is updated and the cost of goods sold is calculated. The real-time balances in merchandise inventory and cost of goods sold are not known, but calculated only after an inventory count. Now, even in a perpetual system, a physical count must be performed at the end of the accounting period to record differences between the actual inventory on hand and the account balance.